Imagine you find out that your husband is having an emotional affair with his best friend's wife who's living under your roof while you're seven months pregnant. This is exactly what one of our viewers are dealing with. And so should she expose the affair to her husband's friend or continue living with this painful secret? Let's dive into this heartbreaking dilemma and find out exactly what she should do next. Hi, my name is Sasani Pettiford. I'm an infidelity recovery specialist with 20 years of experience, 15 books, and over a thousand restored marriages. I'm here to guide you with proven strategies and expert advice. Let's get started. So I found my husband in an emotional affair with his friend's wife who's currently living in our house. This happened when I was seven months pregnant. I've never been the same and I feel completely broken. Worst part is I couldn't tell my husband's friend about his wife's relationship with my husband and they are still living in our house. It's hard for me to heal and get past it. I find myself crying every day because I see her and remember. My husband was remorseful in the beginning, but it was short lived. It's affecting everything about my life. I want the lady out of the house, but my husband doesn't. Now I want to tell the friend. Please advise. This is a lot. But before we get into the depths of this situation, just off top, be careful who you let into your home, especially if they're looking to stay for a period of time. In fact, the only conversation that you should even have is why are you coming? How long do you plan on staying? And what is your plan to leave? Period. <laughs> because if there is no clear understanding, this entire situation may turn on you in the end. So first of all, I want to say sorry for the fact that you're going through this. The fact that your husband would have an affair with his best friend's wife, number one, is a violation. Obviously, any type of betrayal is, but there are certain betrayals that cut a little bit more. This is what we would call death by a thousand cuts because of the nature of the relationship. So not only has he severely betrayed you, but he's betrayed his friend. And the fact that it happened in your own home is a whole nother can of worms. Now, we know that there's a high percentage of affairs that happen in the workplace. And so when a spouse goes away to work, the workplace becomes a trigger. But when your trigger now becomes your own home, your own domain, it's a whole heap of issues that go along with that. I remember working with a couple where the spouse had an affair with the next door neighbor. So the next door neighbor's house was a major trigger for uh, that particular person. So every time they got up in the morning and looked out their window and saw the property, triggered. They leave and come back from work. They have to pass the house in order to go into their home. Triggered. But imagine if your bedroom, the kitchen, the living room, the den, the family area is the place where the violation took place. So the, the home within itself is a trigger, but the fact that the affair partner is still living in the home, Lord have mercy. Now, does it surprise me that something can happen like this? Not at all. Because whenever men and women are in close proximity, there's a higher probability of a betrayal. Matter of fact, the two biggest milestones that have taken place in human history that has helped to increase significantly the rate of betrayals is number one, women entering into the workplace. Because it was a division of labor at one point, men and women worked in two separate spaces. But once laws changed, and now they could work together and work on projects together and be a part of teams together and have cubicles next to each other, there was more space and opportunity for betrayals to take place. Because if you're spending time with someone every single day, you're forming a relationship, you're developing a sense of intimacy. So we see how that could easily happen in the workplace and the workplace has become a hotbed for infidelity. The second milestone that has taken place is social media. Because now, through all of these platforms, I have easy access to people that I once dated or people that I'm interested in, and I can poke and I can tag and I can uh, like and DM any one of my choosing, it increased the probability. But in this particular case, this was a relationship that you had with another couple. Now, I can imagine going out on dates with them, congregating with them, building a relationship over a long period of time with them. 
And what happens is because of the nature of the relationship, there is a depth of intimacy that has been established. And this is why it is so important for couples to establish healthy boundaries for what is appropriate and inappropriate when dealing with opposite sex friends. And listen, we all have couple friends, but there's a certain line that you do not cross. Like with our shared couple friends, I'm not connecting and communicating and tagging and texting and, and DMing and getting on phone calls with, with my friend's spouse. No, I'm, I'm having a direct conversation with the male in the relationship. Danielle's having a direct conversation with the female in the relationship. And when we do cross over to talk to the other, we're in each other's presence. We're on dates. We're congregating. So there's a level of respect. So no matter how close the friendship is, there should be a distance. Like you only allow people to get so close to your spouse because of situations like this. So if I need to have a conversation with someone, I'm going to have it with the same sex friend, not the opposite sex friend in this coupled relationship. Why? Because I have a penis and she has a vagina and anything is possible. And so you want to make sure that you establish clear lines and boundaries and borders and parameters in your relationship that would prevent the possibility of anything ever going down. Now, imagine having a couple live in your home for an extended period of time. And so the wife goes to sleep because she's tired, but I stay up. And I'm engaging in conversation in the living room and we're laughing and we're joking and we're listening to music and we're watching TV and we're connecting. Now, meanwhile, her husband, he went down, too, because he's got to get up early in the morning. And so, listen, we're just friends. Nothing's wrong. Everything's appropriate. It's just innocent. But it always starts that way, doesn't it? One of the challenges that you have is the fact that your husband was unfaithful while you were pregnant. It's interesting because there are certain risk factors associated with a betrayal. And betrayals happen at some of the most inopportune times. And it is very common that while a wife is pregnant and they're emotionally detached, they're not engaging in physical intimacy, there's a lot going on that is taking precedent over their relationship, it's easy for a spouse to slip away and engage in a betrayal of this magnitude. So here you have the baby. Nurturing the baby, dealing with the husband, and every time you look up, there she is, walking through the kitchen, watching TV, eating your food, and all you could think about is what has happened. You had somewhat of a conversation with your spouse who showed some type of empathy and remorse, but that was short-lived, so it shows that there was no real change, and yet they continue to interact, they continue to have conversations, and you are holding the secret. You are protecting your husband from what? Are you protecting yourself? Are you protecting his relationship with his best friend? Are you protecting the betrayed spouse? Who are you protecting here? Maybe you're protecting everyone for their benefit, but for your personal detriment. And so your question is, should you tell your husband's best friend? Well, the easy answer would be yes. But because I don't know the situation, I don't know the personality, I don't know the history of that person, I don't know the relational dynamic of the couple who's staying with you, there's a lot that goes into determining what the specific process should be in this situation. But what I will tell you is this, you need to have a frank conversation with your husband and you need to express your frustration, your discontent, and what this is doing to you emotionally in that you want this woman and her man out of your house and they've got 24 hours to get out of town by sundown. And if he doesn't do it, he's putting you in a position that will force you to do it. And it would be better if he did it than if you did it. And if he doesn't do it, I would have a conversation with the best friend. I would have a conversation with the best friend's wife. I would shut the whole thing down. There is no way that I would allow temporary visitors to continue to wreak havoc in my home. <laughs> Listen, you need to tell them you don't got to go home, but you got to get the heck out of here. And you give them a very short timeline. And in that period of time, you make it extremely uncomfortable for everyone in that home to remain. Now, once they leave, the real work begins. And that is your personal journey of healing and the potential restoration of the marriage. And if you're a couple in crisis, 
on the verge of a divorce or struggling with the pain of infidelity and you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one, or would like to attend one of our last chance weekends, go to the website couplesacademy.org or click the link in the description for a free discovery call and let's see how we can help you today.